Good after, good morning, I should say, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm joined by LGBT, LGBT Network President and CEO David Kilnick and some other special guests to announce our plans to celebrate Long Island Pride this June. The LGP Network, excuse me, the LGBT Network has been a voice for LGBT people and their families and support systems throughout Long Island and Queens for the past 25 years, and they do amazing work. It's a nonprofit organization that grows and grows with wonderful programs in our schools and in our communities island wide. They do a fantastic job. Uh, we have some very exciting news to announce today. The voices of the LGBT community will be heard loud and clear on June 10th when 25 students and five school officials from Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School, they will be traveling from Parkland, Florida and serve as the Grand Marshals of the 28th Annual Long Island Pride Parade in Long Beach. We support this community and proudly will display the pride flag right here at this building uh, in Mineola. And for the first time in Nassau County's history, we will showcase the beautiful rainbow dome. So you know how we like the dome in different colors for various causes? We will be lit in rainbow colors for the first week of June. Um, a, just one thing I would love to share with you about our Pride Festival, and I would love everyone to come. Over 30,000 people from across the United States are expected to attend this three-day Pride Festival, which includes over 30 events across the city of Long Beach, including the Boardwalk and the Beach. Funds raised at Pride on the Beach Festival will benefit the LGBT Network's life-saving anti-bullying programs in Long Island and in New York City. Now, before I turn it over to David, I would like to thank very much the Executive Director of our Human Rights Commission, Rodney McRae, and Commissioner Ken Haino for joining us here today. Uh, over to you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is David Kilnick. I'm uh, President and CEO of the LGBT Network, which produces the uh, Long Island Pride Festival, which is now a three-day event uh, with a three-day event with over 30 uh, different events that take place over the weekend in the beautiful city by the sea here in Nassau County, uh, Long Beach, uh, New York. Um, I'd like to thank the county executive, uh, County Executive Laura Curran, uh, for having us here today and for the first time actually flying the rainbow flag uh, from a county building on Long Island and also lighting up the beautiful dome. I can't wait to see that. That is certainly going to be a sight to see and will make uh, Nassau County, which under the county executive's leadership has already proven to be a more inclusive and welcoming place uh, for LGBT families. So this is something certainly that people outside of Long Island will take a look at and say, you know what, Nassau County is a place that I'd like to move to. Uh, you know, LGBT families will take a look at that and say, this is a place I want to raise my children because the county is a more inclusive place under our county executive's leadership. So let me just tell you a little bit about the event. Um, the event, as I said, is a three-day uh, uh, extravaganza uh, that takes place from June 8th through the 10th throughout the city of Long Beach in different venues. Um, everything from a three-day carnival uh, right, uh, right on the boardwalk to a 5K run on Saturday, a beach party and fashion show on uh, Saturday as well. There is faith services. There's a Pride Shabbat service. There is also a Pride Faith service, uh, Pride Mass on Sunday. Um, and what we're taking a look at with all, and a lot more, we have handouts for you of all the uh, different events that are taking place. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, what we're seeing is that the entire Long Island community is getting involved um, in Long Island Pride, which is really important. So everything from our faith institutions to uh, the New York Islanders and the Long Island Nets uh, to our athletic teams and sports teams to over 35 businesses in the city of Long Beach. 35 plus businesses in the city of Long Beach will be running Pride specials and having Pride parties throughout the whole weekend. So while this is a weekend certainly of significance, I'm going to talk about that a little more in one second. While this is a weekend certainly of great significance, of regional significance uh, for our island, um, this is also one of economic development that is bringing in much needed money uh, to uh, the city of Long Beach and also Long Island um, that will help our businesses grow, will help tourism. Um, all hotels in Long Beach are sold out. We're having a hard time getting rooms for other people uh, around the, uh, in the surrounding areas. Uh, so this is also a driver of economic development. 
um, and, uh, and bring in more folks in here. And before I go further, uh, there's someone who just walked in who I'd like to recognize, uh, a town of Hempstead supervisor, Laura Gillen, as, as well. And, uh, and Supervisor Gillen has also been very helpful in making this Pride Weekend uh, be that much more special uh, with a special event that will take place at Malibu, uh, nightclub. I know when I was growing up it was Malibu, uh, but now it's Malibu. And uh, there'll be a great party there on Saturday night. Uh, plus, through the support of our two great uh, uh, leaders here, the County Executive and Town of Hempstead Supervisor, there will also be more parking available and uh, we, will provide, we will be providing shuttle buses uh, from the town and uh, county beaches uh, into the city of Long Beach as well. So. You know, I think that we've all seen um, in the news uh, uh, over the past, uh, well, over the past several years of what's happening to our young people um, in our schools and also to people in our churches um, and at ball games and at malls um, that, you know, people are being shot and killed uh, all over our country. And there was, an uh, there was a, a shooting that certainly has taken the nation by storm uh, that happened on Valentine's Day on February 14th in Parkland, Florida, when 17 students and teachers uh, were murdered uh, with the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Now from that, uh, what happened after that shooting was that there were brave students who stood up and decided that they weren't just going to, um, they just weren't going to be silent. They were going to take action. And these brave students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School have started and led what will be an unstoppable movement to end gun violence in our country. And we are just so happy that we are going to have 30 students and teachers from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School here and recognize them as our Grand Marshals uh, for the 28th Long Island Pride Parade. These young kids and many of the kids who are coming are from the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Gay Straight Alliance Club, so the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas GSA Club, who have been the faces of the movement and the voices behind the movement in galvanizing everyone for change. These are the kids that we need to bring here to Long Island and New York to help continue that momentum and get more people involved. It's also a time where they need a big hug. You know, they need to be able to be kids. What they have been going through is absolutely traumatic. And in the, you know, and what they have done and, 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 and being so brave in this unimaginable tragedy in what they have accomplished, it will be nice for them to come here and have thousands and thousands lining up Broadway in Long Beach, right by the boardwalk, and cheering them on as we recognize the GSA from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School as our Grand Marshals for the 28th Annual Long Island Pride Parade. In addition to that, uh, you know, last year was the first year we had it in Long Beach, and we had a memorial for another shooting. Um, Long Island Pride happens on the same weekend that the shooting in Orlando, the Pulse nightclub, happened. And uh, we had a memorial paddle out that was both moving and touching and impactful. And this year, we will be having the largest memorial tribute in New York State to those that lost their lives in Parkland, Florida, when 17 additional surfers hit the sand and swim out with the 49 others who will swim out still in memory of Orlando, and there'll be over 66 surfers forming a circle out in the ocean, throwing roses in there, reading the names of everyone who lost their lives, while tens of thousands line the shorefront uh, to support and memorialize those who lost their lives. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's an extremely important um, event and recognition, uh, you know, for not only the students, uh, who will be attending here, and we're told that there will be some surfers from Parkland, Florida, who will be joining our Long Island surfers um, in this memorial tribute. Uh, it will be a way of us coming together up and down the East Coast to stand united um, in this movement to, uh, to end gun violence. Now, I'm sure most of you know there also was a Long Island native uh, teacher, uh, that uh, Parkland teacher, that uh, lost his life uh, in the school shooting. Uh, when he let other kids, he opened the door to his classroom uh, to let other kids come in to be safe. And that's when he was shot and lost his life, Scott Beagle. Um, and it's important for us to memorialize uh, Scott Beagle as a Long Island hero um, who gave his life uh, to save others. And today we're very fortunate uh, to have 
uh, Scott's fiance, Gwen Gosler, here with us, um, who's going to share a few words about what this would uh, would have meant to Scott. My name is Gwen Gosler. I was Scott Beagle's fiance. Um, first, I'd like to thank County Executive Laura and LGBT President David for having me and hosting me here today. Um, but mostly, I just want to share a little bit about Scott. Scott was an incredible person. He was my partner in life, and I miss him with every fiber of my body. I credit him for the person I am today. He was my person, and I was his, and we made each other better people. We met over a decade ago at a summer camp in Pennsylvania. I'm honored to be here to tell a little more about Scott's story, but I will say, however, that Scott would probably find this whole thing unnecessary. Scott was one of the most humble people I've ever known, and we have never thought that he deserved this kind of recognition. He never wanted to be known as a hero, but he was. Scott was a hero to the students that he saved on February 14th, but he was also a hero long before then to the thousands of others that he's touched throughout his life. Scott gave his life to save others, and he spent his life helping others. He had a way to make others believe in their best self. While working at camp, Scott had a way of seeing the good in a child when others only saw the negatives. Scott would challenge them to do their best, intrinsically motivating them, making them see that the only person they really needed to impress were themselves. He often did this for me, encouraging me to keep trying at something I was struggling with, convincing me that I was in fact a good teacher on days when I thought I was failing. I saw him do the same thing to countless others as well. Scott was funny, outrageously sarcastic, and incredibly intelligent, but he would never flaunt his intellect. Instead, it came out in his humor. He was so quick-witted, and this was where his smarts really came in. He needed only a split second of think time to have a remark of some sort ready to go. Although the majority of the time, people may not have realized he was even joking. He could keep a straight face in some of the most ridiculous situations, always leaving others wondering if he was being serious or just pulling their leg. In fact, our whole relationship was built on the joke of the idea of us already dating. People were convinced that we would never work out, and the idea of us dating was actually quite funny. Just this joke went on for so long that had been, we had been together for about six weeks before anyone actually found out. It was actually very convenient, though, because it made sneaking around a little easier. <laughs> Another one of Scott's amazing attributes was his creative mind. He could come up with some of the most amazingly fun activities on the drop of a hat. However, he had time to... If he had time to plan something out, the outcome would be spectacular. I've had the privilege of spending the past summers working closely with Scott at camp. While there, I saw him turn some, turn some of the most mundane moments into, the, into ones that the campers would never forget. I was often personally jealous of his creativity. I'm an artist, but I often have a hard time creating my own work, as most of the time is spent planning and preparing projects for my students. He would always tell me that if he had an ounce of the artistic talent that I had, he would create some of the weirdest drawings or paintings. I would tell him that I wish I had his weird creative mind so I could come up with some weird drawings or paintings. I just only wish we had the time to collaborate and come up with some interesting pieces together. Between his creativity, his sense of humor, and his compassion for others, it was no surprise that Scott went to teaching, where he, would, where he would be able to continue to work with children and allow him to continue to go to summer camp. As he began his teaching career, he struggled, as many new teachers do. He started to question if it was the right decision. Teaching is a difficult job, and the thing about Scott was that even if he was doing a good job, he wasn't going to be happy until he was doing a great job. He decided that if he decided that if he wanted he wanted to take a break, he started to look into different careers, but he wasn't finding a good fit. We discussed one night that what deciding what he actually enjoyed to do, and that was working with children. So he decided that he would take his love for working with children and the love of history to go into secondary social science teaching. And that is what led him to Marjorie Spillman Douglas. This was his first year there. It was almost like his first year teaching again. First time in a high school, first time teaching geography, he struggled. He felt as if he wasn't reaching his students. He would spend countless hours at home planning out lessons and then going back to fix them. Slowly though, he was making it through. After winter break, something clicked. He began to to start becoming more comfortable, started being able to show a little more of his true self to his students. He was also excited to coach another season of cross country. He was really finding his place at the school, but also he was finally finding his place in his life. But then tragedy struck and his life was cut short. It was stolen from him, from us. Our future together was erased. 
We never would get the chance to buy a house together, to get married. He would never be able to play fetch with his beloved dog Murphy again, to see how the games of Game of Thrones wraps up, to see his favorite bands in concert. He would never be able to travel the world. Scott will never get to live out his life, and neither will the other 16 victims who lost their lives on Valentine's Day. One thing I can do, however, is to continue to make sure that his memory is not forgotten, to make sure all 17 victims continue to live on in our hearts. It means a lot to me that we are here today to announce that Scott and the other 16 victims will be honored at this year's Pride Festival. It's even more special that students from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas will be making a trip here to Long Island where Scott grew up to pay tribute. Tribute to his life of compassion, to his life of always putting others before himself. I like to end this by saying again, thank you to David and Laura for having me to speak about Scott and to share about his life. And just in case he is out there somewhere listening, I just want to say, Scott, I miss you and I will always love you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today to talk about how we will, at the Pride Festival, honor the 17 people tragically killed in Parkland, Florida. I thank you, Gwen, again, for telling us about Scott. Long Island Pride is about celebrating our differences, but also about, cel also about celebrating what brings us together. So it's a really special tribute that will be led by 30 students and teachers from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And it's so exciting that it will take place right here in Long Beach and in the town of Hempstead. The town of Hempstead is proud and delighted to play a part of this historic event by donating space and by standing with the survivors of the shooting. We are at a crossroad in our country and it's important that these voices are heard. So I thank everyone for their participation and for their support for this really important event, and I look forward to celebrating and to honoring the victims of Parkland. Thank you very much, Laura, and thank you, Gwen, for sharing your story. I know it's not easy, and it probably will never be easy, but it's so meaningful that you're here joining with us today. I'm really excited about Pride on the Beach. It's gonna be a fantastic, we're going to have great weather. I know that's going to happen. It's going to be a great weekend, and we're going to make a lot of money, which is great. I see we have Kara Longworth from the Empire State Development Corporation, and I always have to bring everything back to economic development. <laughs> this is great for us. It's, great for, it's, it's also great for our brand here in Nassau County to show that we are inclusive. We are welcoming of everyone, and we're going to have a really good time doing it. I'm delighted that the Gay Straight Alliance community from Parkland is coming to join us. And I hope that you all come and show everyone that Nassau is absolutely the place to be. Thank you very much. Um, I, ha Thank you, sir. And I'm happy to take, we're happy to take any questions you might have. All right, I think we've covered it. Oh, great, okay. Oh, yes. I have a food. Okay, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, you know, rainbow flags are going to be flown uh, right here uh, at Nassau County and also uh, in the town of Hempstead. And so it is my pleasure to officially present uh, the rainbow flag uh, to County Executive Laura Curran and Town of Hempstead Supervisor Laura Gillen. And thank you so much for your leadership and support. This is making a huge difference and impact in the lives of so many LGBT families. So it's my pleasure to present you with the official rainbow flag that we're going to look for in a couple of weeks flying over this building right. and also the supervisors. Thank building. you so much.